What's up everybody? I'm Michael Christ, three years running top seller at Shine On, now head of marketing at Shine On. And before we get started in today's video, I just wanted to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. If you like this kind of content, I want you to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you enjoy the video. Dude, let's let's talk a little bit about creativity. So this is something that I think, uh, how do I put it? Those that are more like engineer minded type individuals probably struggle with when it comes to the print on demand space. But I kind of see this wave happen every time there's some new trend kind of in this marketing world that we all play in. And that's it. Like when a new product comes along, generally like, uh, how do I put it? Like the, the, you don't have to be super creative to do really well with it. You can take things that are pretty simple, pretty standard, but since it's like a new product, that alone makes it stand out in the newsfeed and draws attention and eyeballs to it and that kind of thing. But over time, as the market gets saturated with those types of products, it's going to take something more creative. Like, it, it, like you're just going to have to get a lot better at appealing to different segments of the audience. First of all, does that sound true to you? And second of all, like, what do you do to... Um, stay creative to, to make sure that when you find an idea, you're putting kind of your own unique spin and flavor on it and, and making something that perhaps people have never seen before. Yeah. So I guess the first part of the question is, um, the designs I always keep super simple, just like all my advertising campaigns. Like I like to keep everything simple. And, um, most of my designs are like, uh, if, if, if I'm going like really broad, uh, and I'm not like doing like a sub niche, like we we're talking about like a movie or something like that. Uh, it's literally like a simple one color message card, sometimes two tone message card with big text and the message. So the message is the most important part. That's something that you and I have, you know, pushed out a lot that the, the message is what really sells. So, um, make sure the message is seen, like whether it's new creative or old creative, as long as the message is seen, like I've, I've, I've pushed the same creative to the same audience and being, I've uh, been successful, but, you know, change the message or change the, or the, or the tone, like just the, just the background of the message card is enough to hit a different segment of the audience. So there's plenty of segments of a audience, which you can hit. So, and the second part of your question was about the um, trying to find uh, ideas for designs. Um, so I guess it's like trying to find audiences which would be interested. So like TV series, movies, particular activities like ballet or something like that, for example. Um, so, you know, th these audiences would be super engaged. So. Uh, while they're not super broad, you'd probably like add like a design element so you can have like a ballerina on on one side of the message card. So this is like a more niche engaged product. So we we're talking about broad products before. So like if you want to go to like bigger, broader audiences, you know, you just keep it super simple and uh, just like one color plus text, right? So now we're talking about sub niche and niche products where you add some design elements where you're like making it catered to the audience. So like we talked about like a movie, you can have like some uh, elements from the movie as long as it's not copyrighted. So like, you know, do a freehand drawing or something else like a fan art, like different, like I'm not saying like go and take, uh, you know, Disney for example, and put like a Disney logo on it. That's definitely not what I'm saying. I'm saying like, maybe like you can do your own take on, something like a fan out of a character or something like that. But, um, you know, at least that way you've got, um, you've got something that will hit the audience. And the other thing is it makes your targeting a lot easier because you just target the audience, which is interested in that TV series, uh, book activity, whatever it is that you're doing. Like, um, I've seen some other people doing some creative designs, uh, as well, like, um, with hunting. So, you know, there's plenty of, plenty of niches, like there's fishing, there's so many, so many activities out there that are probably untapped that, you know, people can look at, um, combining. So rather than just going for 
wife like everyone's just going out first thing they think about you know to my wife and so many people testing that you know you've got this sub niche which is more probably more engaged and you have more people um engage uh likely to purchase that does that kind of cover that I guess. no it totally makes sense man um it sounds like you're saying and i think you and i might have slightly different approaches here it sounds like you're saying that uh, especially for folks that are relatively new, it's probably going to be easier to break into this space and kind of learn the ropes if they go after, if they try to find an audience that's already engaged and then basically create uh, uh, designs tailored towards that audience, right? Um, this is actually something I did cover in a niche selection Facebook post I did a while back with an infographic. I said, most people create a design and then try to find an audience. You should find an audience and then kind of reverse engineer a design that you think the audience would like. Um, For sure. That's, that's I think cool. where you and I may be, uh, uh, first of all, I don't disagree with that approach at all. In fact, I'm, I'm probably going to go experiment with that now um, into 2021. I think where you and I maybe have uh, uh, approached things a little differently is like, I always have just tended to go as broad as I can, because when I find something, I want to be able to, scale it to incredible levels. Um, and I'm okay if that means I have to test more products to find the one that will do that. Um, but that's, I mean, that's interesting. It sounds like it's probably a more consistent way to find profitable products. Yeah. You think that's that, about right? That That's exactly right. And I agree with you. Like at the moment I'm doing a broad product and I'm trying, I'm creeping up on your, one week selfie. <laughs> so, um, we'll we'll see how that pans not a, out. Not a three row as you're not, buddy. <laughs> no, it's a bit tighter than that. But um, again, like it, it's still crazy. Like how how crazy how quickly and how um, like like literally. I think I started this product on the twenty second, and uh, you know we're 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 almost at we're we're just about at half a million in terms of sales so it's crazy like it's 14 days Dude, th million. this time of year is magical for that kind of stuff and that's just one product like i've got another yeah. account other products so um it's crazy what's up everybody michael christ here i want to thank you so much for checking out today's video before you leave make sure you like subscribe hit that notification bell check out all the links in the description below particularly the link to register on shineon.com and also the link to our facebook group where we are constantly sharing marketing tips and tricks to help you take your e-commerce game to the next level so once again i hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll see you in the next one